This should be okay. I'll smite you! Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Well, more like strategy RPG with roguelike and survival elements are back on the menu because today we are sampling Monster Menu, the scavenger's cookbook on the PS5. Monster Menu tells the tale of a group of adventurers that get lost on an expedition through a rookie dungeon. Can you hear the air quotes there? With no food or water, our heroes are becoming increasingly desperate when they stumble across a festering monster corpse. Out of pure survival instinct, they take a bite, only to pass out and wake up at an abandoned camp with no recollection of how they got there. Now they must begin their expedition again and try to find a way out of the dungeon with only their wits, a few good friends, and a frying pan to cook up all of the enemies that stand in their way. Let's hope this doesn't become an alive situation. <laughs> Who are these brave adventurers, you may ask? Well, they're anyone you want them to be, as long as you like cute anime girls in micro skirts or stoic hero types. You begin by creating your primary character, and once you learn the basic gameplay mechanics, you can choose to either continue solo or create a party of up to four members. Character customizations include name, appearance, and outfit, as well as a fairly wide selection of jobs or roles for your party members. You can be everything from a berserker to a chef, and just about anything in between. These roles aren't merely a fun title, but also impact your strengths and skills during gameplay. Whether you hunger for a challenge or run from anything that requires thought, you'll find a difficulty option here to suit your specific tastes. Difficulty can also be changed at any time, which is helpful if you bite off more than you can chew. Once you're in the dungeon, it's a matter of exploring the floors, taking on monsters in turn-based battles, and gathering loot. Did I say loot? What I meant is meat, equipment, and materials. You'll also collect shards that can be offered up at altars for various blessings and curses. Combat consists of your standard attacks, magic, and items, as well as the not-so-standard option to devour the bodies of fallen foes. Yummy. You'll find the exit to the dungeon floor after a bit of meandering, and from there, you can choose to rest and replenish or continue on to the next floor. You'll need to keep an eye on not just HP, but also calories, hydration, and happiness. Much like real life, I did a terrible job at all of this. Here's the survival element we were talking about in the beginning. Items and meat you collected during your excursion can be combined and cooked up into dishes to nourish your party and provide various stat boosts. Other materials can be used to create items via crafting. You can also equip any new items or garments that may give your group the upper hand on the next floor. Unsure of what I was getting myself into, I played on the normal difficulty and quickly found the combat tedious. More often than not, I found myself killing the same enemies, cooking the same dishes, feeding the same party members, and listening to the same one-liners over and over and over again. Combat wasn't challenging, but you could certainly make it more challenging by using the shards you collected or upping the difficulty in settings, but that wasn't really what was getting to me. I grew weary of this gameplay loop quickly because the game didn't do much to keep things fresh. The whole game feels very lather, rinse, repeat, and doesn't even leave my hair feeling silky smooth. I wish there was more of a story intertwined in the endless dungeon crawling. I also wish that you didn't lose your levels and progress after a death. There was one point in the game I was ambushed, never even got to take a turn, and lost all progress all because the wonky camera angles worked against me. It hardly felt fair and certainly didn't make me feel warm and fuzzy about starting from scratch. There wasn't nearly enough enemy or environmental variety, and it made me lose visual interest quickly as well. It's not offensively bad, don't get me wrong, but much like the meat in your inventory, it gets old pretty quickly. 
Another thing Monster Menu is really lacking was some catchy dungeon exploration music. Characters waltz around floor after floor, picking up items in disturbing silence. No wonder they have to say something every five seconds just to fill the void. Music kicks in during battle, and when it's there, it's great. I just needed more of it. Also not sure why my character sounded like she was aroused by the act of picking up monster corpses in a dungeon, but I'm not here to kink shame. Honestly, this is the kind of game I'd prefer to play on mute with my own soundtrack in the background. It felt like a missed opportunity. I have a feeling fans of the Disgaea franchise will find some enjoyment in this title. For me, it was light on story and strategy and even lighter on fun. I enjoyed the concept of using items collected to create unique dishes to power up your party, but I feel like other titles have done that better. It was a few hours of fun, but not something I would sink my teeth into for an extended play session. Like a bad diet, Monster Menu just left me hungrier than before and craving something good to consume. Thank you so much for supporting clickbait free independent content here on YouTube. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe to help us bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming and be sure to check out patreon.com slash I dream of indie games where we can together defeat the gaming echo chamber.